Hello, welcome to Torah Tuesday. We're in Leviticus, as you would be aware, and we're up to chapters 7 to 9 today. Um, I've been enjoying it. I don't know about you, but here we go. Today we're talking about priests, mostly. So in chapter 7, we have the conclusion of the section that we've been reading uh, that outlines the five sacrifices to be made in the tabernacle. Um, so if you want to know more about that, then you can go and listen to the last two weeks if you haven't already, or you can check out the table about sacrifices that I've attached in this email. But we've come to the end of that section. Uh, and in chapters 8 to 10, we take a nice little break from instructions, uh, a priestly tech manual, as it's often described, and we get some story time in chapters 8 to 10. Maybe you didn't notice it as you read it, but chapters 8 and 9 are stories, and so is chapter 10 next week. So this week, it's happy stories, and then next week, it's a terrible story. Let's talk about chapters 8 and 9. In chapter 9, Moses is enacting the consecration ritual for the priests that God told him to carry out back in Exodus 29. So back when Moses was on Mount Sinai, God gave him instructions about how he should carry out the consecration for the priests who would work in the tabernacle. And he carries it out exactly uh, in in chapter 8. So Moses, he expertly fulfills his task. And the aim of all of this, this ritual, was two things. It was to consecrate the tabernacle itself as a suitable place for priests to work. And then it was to consecrate Aaron and his sons to be the priests. So this was all about consecration. Now that word consecration, it it is the act of making people and objects holy so that they may exist and serve in proximity to God's presence. We'll come back to that in a bit. Uh, First, we have Aaron and his sons washed, uh, so they bathe, and then they are dressed in their special priestly robes that we discussed back in Exodus. Uh, So they've got their uniform on, Aaron and his sons, and they are anointed with oil. Uh, And all of this is done as a one-off by Moses. Uh, Moses, he consecrates the first priest as a kind of quasi-priest so that they can go on with the consecrating into the future. Uh, But this is a one-off this first time. Moses does it all himself. Um, Once they've been oiled and the furniture in the tabernacle has also been anointed with holy oil, uh, then sacrifices can be made. And Moses as well, he does these initial sacrifices. Uh, First, a bull, so it's a purification offering, and then a ram, a fellowship offering, and he does it exactly as God explained in the first seven chapters. Uh, And yet there is something that is slightly different about these offerings. Uh, In all the offerings uh, covered in Leviticus, blood is never applied to the offerer. But here, blood uh, from the ordination uh, ram is placed on the right earlobes and on the thumbs and on the big toes of Aaron and his sons. Now, this was um, a sign of dedication. You know, it symbolized the entirety of these people. Uh, And Aaron and his sons are henceforth to be marked. They are consecrated. They are working for God. Uh, Then they are to eat the meat of the sacrifice and they're not to leave the entrance of the tabernacle, you would have seen, for seven days. They are to stay in the courtyard at the door to the tent of meeting. Now, all of this this, um, description in chapter 8 and 9, it's... It's characterized by obedience. Uh, Yahweh, God, gives these instructions back in Exodus, and they are carried out precisely. In fact, seven times, there's that key number seven, we are told it it happened just as Yahweh commanded. It makes the point that they did this right. And then following this, Moses and Aaron are able to enter into the tent of meeting. Um, This is... Astonishing. Remember, Exodus finishes and Moses cannot go into the tent of meeting, into the tabernacle. Um, No one can go into the tent of meeting. And here we have, after the consecration of Aaron and his sons, we have Moses and Aaron entering together. It's a huge moment in the storyline. 
And the way that this has been made possible is through the priests and the sacrifices. So essentially, this is just a big stamp of approval on the priestly system, on the cultic system, uh, the sacrifices that are made. This all works. God comes to dwell in the tabernacle in a consuming fire and the people shout for joy and they fall prostrate in worship. Everything is good. It's all going according to plan. Until we read the first few verses of chapter 10. But like I said, we're not going to get to that till next week. Let's talk for a moment about priests. Um, I'm not sure if you've given much thought to priests, uh, but these chapters, they will have us thinking about priests in detail. Now, I think that Protestant Christians, uh, we can be a little bit suspicious of priests, uh, people who stand in a role or a position uh, between God and people, um, other people. You know, there's a kind of intermediary role. I think we can be a little bit suspicious of them if we're honest. But actually, um, if we are to be exact, it's not that we don't believe in priests, even as Protestants. We do, in fact, believe in priests. Even in the New Testament, there are priests. But we believe um, that all Christians are priests. Uh, from the time of the Holy Spirit, all Christians are priests. Uh, this is actually a doctrine. It's called the priesthood of all believers. And so, by the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we, ourselves, have been consecrated. It's as, it's as if our earlobes and the big toes of our feet have been um, dipped in the blood that has made that made us holy. And now we are priests. You know, Peter makes this point in in his letter. Uh, he says that Christians are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. He says, uh, John in Revelation, he calls all the believers priests to his God and Father. So do you consider yourself to be a priest? You know, when you read about the priests uh, in the Old Testament, do you see that consecration as something that has happened to you? Because that is what the Bible teaches. Um, we are priests. We have a role uh, in bringing people to God and bringing God to people. But more than just being priests, we also have a priest. Uh, Hebrews in the New Testament will tell us that Jesus is our high priest, who even now he ministers on our behalf in the heavenly tabernacle to God, to the Father. Um, and to understand what all of this means, we need these verses in Leviticus. So the Israelites, they were priests. Um, remember, God said that they would be a royal priesthood, their nation. But they were also in need of priests. That's why they had Aaron and the Levites. We as well are priests, but we have need of a priest as well. And our great high priest is the Lord Jesus to serve on our behalf. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for our priest, Jesus, whoever lives to plead, to plead for me, as the song so wonderfully says. And Lord, help me um, to be consecrated, set apart, made holy in order to minister to people, to bring them to God and to bring God to them. Amen.